What's up everybody, in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to play Krag. On a fundamental level he's pretty easy to pick up and he's really intuitive. And a lot of people at some point tend to gravitate towards him as at least having him as a secondary uh, at some point in their career. Uh, but since his overall gameplay is really straightforward, I've also included a tips and tricks section to the end of this video. Now, I'm doing that because I don't think this video is going to be super long with how I'm going to explain how to play him. Uh, but the tips and tricks is still meant for beginners in that I'm not going to try and tell you everything there is to learn about Krag. I definitely, there's a lot I don't know because I don't main the character. It's, there, there's a lot that you're going to have to learn from watching other people um, and then just figuring it out on your own from a lot of uh, game time. Uh, but with that said, uh, as usual, I'm going to be going over the strengths and weaknesses, uh, how to use all of his tools, how to play neutral with him, some basic combos, recovery mix-ups, some kill confirms, and then like I said, the, the last tips and tricks section. And so with that being said, uh, let's get started. So, um, some of the strengths I have for him is that he lives long, and I mean, he's, I'm pretty sure he's the heaviest character in the game, uh, if not, he's, he's up there. And so with good DI, you should be able to live a long time with this character. Um, another thing I have down is that he's really good at edge guards. So with the tools that he has at his disposal, he, he usually can get a, a live percent racked up on his opponent uh, over the course of an edge guard. And then lastly, I just wanted to put that he's really consistent um, and easy to pick up. I know I mentioned that, that latter part already, but since he's pretty easy to play mechanically and a, a lot of his mix-ups are like on a fundamental level, uh, it makes his gameplay really consistent and so that's a I would say that's a, a good strength And now for his weaknesses. Well, he's slow um, He's the slowest character in the game And so that makes him really susceptible to like bait and punish type gameplay and then also since he's heavy and he has a pretty big body uh, He's really big combo food and those are like his biggest weaknesses. I would say um, So with that being said, let's move on to how to use all of his tools so uh, first off is his jab. Really solid jab. It's frame 5. Uh, one of his fastest grounded options. Not even his fastest though. Um, but it's a good move and a lot of people will just use it as you will any other character where it converts into tilts um, on hit really reliably. Um, and that's about all there is to say about jab. Uh, next up is dash attack. And so dash attack is a, a pretty decent burst option that, that has a lingering hitbox. Um, and it, and it's really far reaching forward as well. Uh, with that being said, it, it's really laggy. So you want to use it sparingly, but it has this cool and unique mechanic to it where you can cancel your dash attack and lag on hit into just about anything, like a, any type of ground adoption, uh, but mostly for your tilts and jabs. So I'm going to turn teching off for Zetabrin here because just to prove the point that you can really connect moves really well, especially if your opponent isn't on top of it for, for DIing down or, or Behind in and then teching right away. And so this usually connects like dash tech into forward tilt, dash tech into down tilt is his fastest option uh, because down tilt is his fastest uh, grounded option, by the way. Uh, spoiler. And then dash tech into up tilt if it works on certain DIs as well. Um, so dash tech is just a really good gap closer if you're, if you're really comfortable or confident that your dash tech is going to land. Uh, next is his up tilt. Up tilt, something to mention about it is that the hitbox starts behind him. Um, let's see, I think it's frame five. So this fifth, or yeah, this uh, this first hitbox comes out on frame five and starts behind him. And so it's really good at scooping people up. Um, if they tech roll in, let's see, I can have him tech roll in. And then I don't even have to turn around, I can cover his tech roll in uh, with up tilt. And so it's, it's, it's good in that sense. And it's also a pretty good anti-air, as you can see here. Pretty disjointed and reaches pretty high. And so, as you can imagine, uh, it's great for neutral, for, you know, catching people uh, trying to land above you. And then you can get a couple of, like, good strings off it with, like, an aerial, like, up air. Next is forward tilt, which I've already gone into a little bit because of dash attack. Um, but on its own, without dash attack, it, it, it sends Crag a little bit forward. You're usually going to use this move outside of a jab or outside of a dash attack. Um, and it's really just good for pushing people off stage, and that's its main use. And since Krag has a good edge guarding flow chart or you know game plan, then then you are gonna often want to just push people off stage. 
Next is Down Tilt. So this move is frame four. Uh, oh, let me start restart the timer on the top left. So frame four move, uh, really good and really spammable. And you'll see a lot of people will use this to like trick or to chain into itself, especially at lower percents. Um, and now of course it's techable, but you know, in the practical, you know, game gameplay, you don't always tech everything you have the option to. And so you can get away with a lot of jabs into down tilts and then maybe you read that they're going to tech roll in because they're holding in and they're just, you know, spamming trying to tech. And so you can catch them with an up tilt like we talked about earlier. Um, stuff like that. Down tilt's just really fast and so it's a good get off me if you tech in place as well. Uh, next is his aerials. So Nair is a really interesting move. Uh, the first hitbox comes out below and in front of Craig, just right there, and it's really fast. Um, let me move Zetterburn back towards the middle of the stage. So, frame 5 Nair, um, the first hitbox comes out frame 5. Um, sends it a pretty good angle and it's really good for hitfall combos. Hits 2 and 3 are really similar, so here's hit 2, here's hit 3. They're really similar in, in practice in that if you land this part of the move, you can often get an up air out of it. Uh, and then the fourth hit sends back is back to sending outwards from Craig, um, forward. And this top hitbox can be really useful for catching people whenever uh, they're trying to recover high against you. And so Craig's Nair has these four different hitboxes, so it's a multi-hit, it's lingering, but they're, it's not all in the same place. Um, and so that makes it really interesting. Each have like their own unique you know, hits two and three are really similar, but one and four and hits two and three, they all serve like different purposes. Overall, Crag's Nair is really good for combo breaking since it comes out frame five. Um, and even if you don't hit with the front hitbox, often, more often than not, if they overextend their combo and just miss you, or you've just thrown it out at a good timing, the hits two and three can connect as well. And like I said, if you land two hits two or three and the opponent's not DIing perfectly away, then you can often connect into an up air. So Nair's really good for combos, combo breaking, and just, you know, just overall having a lingering hitbox. Down there is just a really simple aerial. It just sends straight down. It's pretty weak. It's not like a strong spike. Um, there's not much more to say about it. It's pretty, pretty typical. Uh, next is back air. And so back air is really good. First of all, let me show you the hitbox. I just, it shows a really weird angle, but uh, that's like the 361 degree angle, which I don't need to talk or I won't talk about right now. But, uh, you know, it'll send away for the most part. It has a reverse hitbox though, so it'll send in front of him if he hits someone like this. Uh, and so I would say like using the reverse hit of back air so you can combo into forward air really quickly makes it really useful. And then also just in general, catching people's DI in on, with this move is very important. Uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but I'll just like, you know, briefly talk about like the very common setup where you rely on your opponent to DI in um, on your back air, and then you can get this aerial down special move to connect, and it kills really early, just like you saw. Um, so back air is a good move to throw out really quickly if you if you're hoping that they DI it in because it's a quick move, and and you get a hit fall, and you hit fall into like a the combo, or most likely a kill confirmed from it. So that's what makes back air really useful. Forward air is really straightforward, uh, pretty simple forward air as you would imagine it to be. A lot of these moves are really intuitive and that's what goes into him being pretty easy fundamental character to pick up. Um, forward air is just, as you see, it just reaches in front of him, a little disjointed. Um, and it's, it's, it's one of Craig's main neutral tools because of how far forward it reaches. Uh, only thing to say about uh, forward air is that it can really destroy DIN, and it's just one. It, you'll often kill with this move just because of you know it's how strong it is and how often you're going to want to use it, especially for edge guards as well. And then the last aerial is up air, and so up air I think is a really cool or at least a fun move. It's it's pretty basic in in you know in concept. It's just an upward sending aerial. Uh, he's throwing out a big punch. You can see the disjoint on it, but uh, because of its knockback. It's, it's really fun to chain up airs into each other. Uh, let me lower his percent. Oh, he's at 74, and I'm gonna have him DI in. A big thing about up air is that you can connect two up airs really easily um, if you read DI. 
And then at lower percents, you can just connect up airs pretty easily in general, just by reacting. So up airs are a really solid move um, for chaining strings, both like to start off with if you land a falling up air, and then also off of like something like an up tilt. So up, up air is just a solid move. Um, and now I'm going to talk about his specials. So this is where Crag really it becomes Crag. So first off is neutral special. If there's no rock out on the field that is yours, and you're on ground or a platform, uh, then you will pull a rock. So the rock is really interesting. Projectile. You can pick the rock up back. You can pick the rock up again easily by pressing B, right when you're next to it. Um, you can throw it by pressing A, B, or the right stick, uh, or like your C stick if you're on GameCube controller, for example. So I can throw it down. Also, I can jump. So the only thing you can do with it besides throw it is jump. Um, but yeah, you can throw it down. You can throw it up. You can throw it forward. And then you can throw it in a neutral arc by not holding anything and then pressing A or B. Um, this is a very big part of Craig's gameplay. Uh, it's it's a huge part of his neutral game and why like why he has really big mix-ups in neutral and just in general is a a really creative tool for for that really adds live dynamic gameplay for both players honestly for both for both Craig but also for his opponent. Um, now whenever a hitbox connects with it, that's not a projectile. Any like non-projectile hitbox connects, for example, down tilt. Let me show you the angle that down tilt sends at. Well, that's the angle that the rock will be destroyed at and the shards will go. Um, and so people can parry the shards. Uh, but this is also just as another layer of complexity to the rock because you don't have to just throw the rock at your opponent. Uh, you can also hit the rock and now the shards will hit your opponent. That type of thing. Um, let's see. What else do I need to say about rock? Oh, right. So... Like I said, you can pick up rock if you're next to it, but you can pick it up in the air too by pressing B the same way. Uh, if you already have rock out and you press B, <laughs> this rock shine will come out. I, it, we call it rock shine because uh, it's very fast. Our, yeah, okay, so actually it's not it's not that it's super fast. It's just that it has like no end lag. <laughs> um, literally like no end lag at all. So you can just spam press B and you'll have a hitbox out. But it's not very reliable for combos, but definitely something you can work on as you get better with crack. Um, and so with this rock shine move, you can pick up the rock in the air. Oh. Uh, you can hit people outright like that uh, for very little knockback or and very little hit stun, I should say. Um, and yeah, those, those are the main things. But it's the rock sh or the <laughs> being able to pick the rock up in midair is really good for throwing your rock and, and like chaining these combos together. So that's something we'll talk about later. And that's rock. Um, down B is his down special. In the on the ground, it'll create these three spikes, um, which you know you can connect all. Oops, sorry. You can connect all three together. Um, like that, or, uh, basically, it, it, it'll create these spikes in front of you. And it behaves differently in a couple situations, but the only other situation I'll talk about right now, and I'll save the, the other one for the tips and tricks section at the end of the video, is that on a platform, uh, the spikes will try and spawn on the same height that you're, that you're on right now, but if it runs out of platform, then it'll go on to the next one below it, if possible. And so this is a move that a lot of people will get trapped in using at lower level play. When in reality, these spikes are easily parryable because this move is easy to react to and it goes so far out in front of Craig. So it's something that I recommend you don't get a strong attachment to, a strong building about it, habit of early on. Um, although it will, it will work against a lot of uh, players at first when you start playing. Um, it, it's safer. It's better for you in the long run to not build a bad habit of it, um, and that's that's mainly what I want to say about the grounded version of down special. Um, but with that being said, it is great for catching people whenever they're trying to recover and they can't parry it, or you see them in the air, or maybe they're up on this platform just like right now, and you throw out this down special just in case they want to fall. 
And so it's great for those types of uses, and you'll you'll have to figure that out uh, whenever you start playing more people or start playing people. And then there's an aerial version of down B, um, which I showed you earlier when I comboed back air into down air into the aerial version of down B. So just to show you the hitbox, it's a pretty slow start at move, but uh, it's pretty moderately sized and it's very strong. And so once again, I have the Zetaburn DIing in. So back air into turn around short hop down special, just like that will kill a per like they take someone's stock uh, even at like something like 71%. So it's a very strong move aerial version of down B. Um, so it's great on punishing DI in. And one last thing I want to mention about it is that it converts like if you use it very like close to the ground like here right like just short hop instant down B, it's the spike hitbox is gonna come out. But if you wait a little bit, you press down B, uh, like that, and how I did it before as well. You can you can start it up in the air, and if you're very close to the ground, it'll convert into like the grounded spikes. Uh, something to mention. Next is his side special. This move um, is very slow. It's pretty slow start up, so he doesn't actually start gaining the super armor, which this move has until you see him start rolling um but it does have super armor which means you know he he can take a little bit of knockback from from this move so he can be knocked back a little bit but he's definitely not going to die while in the middle of his side b ever um it's jump cancelable on hit something i should mention so if you run into your rock with your side b you can jump cancel you can jump out of it right away as opposed to without the jump cancel, the only thing you can do is press B again and you, and like exit the the ball that you're inside, which as you can tell is really laggy. Like that's the fastest I can parry coming out of it. So, a lot of your gameplay is going to be working around relying on hitting them or hitting your pillar or hitting your rock with your side B so that you can jump cancel out of it. Um, something little like just something to note: if you hit a character. You can jump cancel out of it at any point. You see that? Like I can, I can side beam him, and then wait, you know, a whole second or two, and I can jump out. But if you hit anything other than the character, you only have a few frames to jump out, like that. that that's like the latest you can jump out is Craig. Like right there. If you wait any longer, and now I try and jump. Oh, even then it worked. Hold on. And now I try to jump. It doesn't work. So just something to keep in mind. If you connect with anything other than a character, you have to jump cancel it pretty quickly for it to for it to work. <clears throat> um, another thing to mention about this move is that it offers a, a pillarless recovery. Um, basically, the way that term came across is this: you have a pillar out. This is his up special, by the way. <laughs> um, you have a pillar out, and you were to try and press up B again after jumping off of your pillar, it looks like this. If you press up B, it looks like that. He, he goes into Pratt Fall. He gets a little bit of a boost, but overall, um, his pillar goes away right away, and and he just like goes into Pratt Fall. Now you can jump, I mean wall jump like you can with any other character, but you won't have pillar again. So you can't use your up B multiple times off stage like you can with everyone, everyone else. Now what I'm talking about with this side B is if you press side B, you can put side B and then you press the a dodge or you're like your parry button or your air dodge button right away or within within a few frames it's pretty lenient it's not hard at all um, you press the dodge button after starting up your side B you'll you'll also get that effect of um, gaining some height but then going into Pratt fall um, you'll gain more horizontal momentum this way but you will lose your capability of using pillar. So I'm gonna go off stage. I'm gonna do this pillarless side B recovery. Recovery. That's another reason why it's called that. You can side B, press your air dodge button, and even if you wall jump, you won't gain your pillar, even if you haven't used it yet. As you see there, that was me pressing up B. Um, and so this this uh, recovery mix-up tool basically is meant for a mix-up and for getting back on stage quickly. Um, say you're edge guarding someone, you don't need to use your pillar and potentially help them recover, right? So you forward air someone. Okay, let's do this. Um, Nair, forward air, 
And now I just want to get back on stage as fast as possible. So I'm going to do the pillowless recovery and I'm not going to waste time using my side B either. So you have that option to you as well. And then lastly, I've already talked about it, is his up B. So his up B produces this pillar and there are some restrictions to it. Like if, uh, like it, the more you stand on it, it'll fall. And the same thing with uh, anyone else. Or if there's a rock on it, it'll fall as well, just like that. Um, but what you see is what you get. It has a hitbox coming up. And that's about everything I really need to say about Pillar. Uh, oh well, I'll say that if someone is on it... Let's see if I can get the Zetterburn on it. Oh wait, I should be able to. If someone is on the Pillar when it breaks... Thank you, Zetterburn. If someone's on the Pillar when it breaks... It will go into pratfall just like that. And so it can be used to get people off stage if they're overly aggressive and you catch them on your pillar or you hit them into your pillar off stage, you can, you know, press up B or pillarless recovery with side B and air dodge and then they'll fall, like basically to the death. And that's, oh, 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 I was about to switch, but I'm reading over my notes and I do want to mention one more thing. Um, you can put, you can, you can pull a rock on your pillar just like that but you can only do it once per pillar. So just something to keep in mind. Um, so even if I'm back on stage, so now that I've touched stage, I get my pillar back. Even though it's already here, I have one stored up. So I can pull rock, throw it. No matter how many times I do it again, I won't be able to pull a rock on that pillar, but I can spawn a new one and then there's my rock. And now that's everything I have to say about uh, Craig's tools and how to use them. Now I'm going to be talking about how to play neutral with Craig. And so this is sort of where his ease to pick up comes into play. Um, as you've seen, you know, there's like his unique special moves. Uh, but overall, his, his aerials, I would say all of his aerials except for Nair, are, are really, really intuitive and easy to understand how to use them and what they're supposed to do and how you can chain them together. The only thing about Nair is, is that uh, it actually gives you some really cool options with how many different hitboxes it has and how they act so differently. But uh, because of that, like I said, with all of his like really intuitive neutrals or his, his normals, uh, playing neutral becomes a fundamental level of mixing things up and mixing up his tools and like pulling these tricks that you learn as Craig, uh, you know, after spending a lot of time on him. But I'll just say this, playing neutrals Craig comes down to mixing up just a few things. So one is rock pull and, and approaches. Um, you wanna be able to pull, in my opinion, like. You want to pull rock almost every time, like a majority of the time when it's just raw neutral um, and there's like no specific like advantage state going on and you're not trying to press any pressure that you've just hit them with. You want to pull rock and you want to pull rock because of how threatening it is. As as an opponent, when you see rock <clears throat> and you can, you know, you can dash dance on like this, like that's intimidating, first of all, but also you can just throw it straight at them. Now they could parry it, but what if they try and parry it? They go for the read on your timing and then you do a neutral throw. Well then, first off, the rock might just hit them, but let's say the rock doesn't hit them. Let's say you do right after. And the fact that you can pick your rock up again so easily, um, it just gives you much more leverage in neutral uh, than, than otherwise without it. Since you're slow, you want to have this great projectile at your disposal. Um, and the number one tip I can give here with in regards to after you've pulled rock, um, don't throw your rock too soon. Don't just throw it away um, because it, it really gives you so much pressure. You can gain so much stage control and, and knock them into the corner and one single hit will put them in an edge guard situation which you can really benefit from. The other part of neutral is if you're on a platform like this or you're just at full hop height in general, um, a lot of it becomes a mix up of aerial drift so maybe you want to forward air them, uh, but maybe you're worried that they're going to parry. And so maybe you drift back with the forward air just to see what they do. Or maybe you're drifting back because, well, it won't hit them if they just stand there or if they parry. But, you know, if that if they decide to approach, it's going to do it's going to hit them if they decide to approach at all. And so aerial drift is really key when you're coming in from above. Um, and like I said with down B, it's really tempting to want to throw out a down B and to get an aerial. Especially once you start using Krag, you'll see that getting a down B is <laughs> really satisfying and it's also really rewarding. Um, 
So mixing in down Bs, you know, solely as a mix up or reading that they're gonna approach and they're not ready to parry it is something important to include in your gameplay as well. <clears throat> but otherwise, uh, in neutral, you wanna approach with Nair from above or or uh, or forward air, I would say, most of the time. Of course, when you're looking for kill confirms, you can look for back airs as well. Um, and then lastly is the grounded approach, which includes like short hopping. So I would say, let me just restart his stock. I would say that um, for grounded approaches, just rely on running in with Nair, or of course, wave dashing in with Nair, um, or jab, because jab is a, uh, a really good tool that can get you some some percent uh, on on characters a uh, good amount of time especially with the down tilt at your disposal disposal um and then of course you can connect into up tilt up air so it's really threatening if you can ever get in on someone and you land a, a jab and then the other option you have like i said when i brought the move up is dash attack it's a decent gap closer it's not a very fast burst option but it lingers pretty well and it connects in a four tilt um a lot of the time or maybe it connects into you just deciding to jump and into a forward air or something whatever the case may be um it's a very good it's a very common go-to option dash tech is and so uh again it really just comes down to how well you mix up those options with crag a lot of it is going to come from rock and shard shenanigans um but those other you know using your aerials are your normals along with those uh with the rock play is, is very important and it's just about mixing those up uh nothing too complicated there so now i'm going to talk about some basic combos so first off i want to say you should learn how to re-grab your rock after a forward throw or after throwing it at someone and having it hit them and then throwing it again so i'm going to forward throw grab it and then forward throw again so i i press right stick in this case whenever i want to throw forward i i Flick the stick to the right, and then I run up, and then I jump, and I'm going to re-grab. And so I jump, press B, and then I just throw it forward again. Oops. <laughs> of course I messed up now. Let me try it. Well, I was really close. Okay. So like that. Really important to learn how to uh, re-grab your rock uh, really consistently. It's 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 really fun, but also it's, it's really good for knocking people off stage. So that's the first thing I want to say. Just overall, getting good at grabbing your rock um, after throwing it. Um, getting that down pat is really nice. Next is something I've already mentioned, which is dash tack into tilts. Um, I've had the Zetabrin DIing in this whole time, I realize now. Um, dash attack into down tilt is your fastest option. It, What down tilt allows you to do out of dash tack is basically like not allow them to text sometimes unless they di it perfectly i'm pretty sure so um dash tech down tilt's a good go-to and then after down tilt maybe you want to go for a down tilt chain and then react to go for another dash tech or maybe they're at this percent and you want to just knock them off stage so you hit them with forward tilt so dash tech into tilts feel rely or feel comfortable um reacting to the situations and then uh, mixing those up next are nair one chains well, Nair 1 combos. So first off, at lower percents, you can really connect to like a, a good amount of Nair 1s together if you wanted to, um, into any aerial. So here I'm doing two Nair 1s. I'm hit falling each Nair. So I'm, pr I'm pressing, I'm Nairing, and then I'm holding down right away. And then I'm doing a forward air. And so Nair into any aerial is really good and pretty consistent, I would say. You can even do it into, you know, an aerial down special, whatever you the case may be. Part of being, you know, this in, very intuitive and, uh, you know, yeah, the part of the intuitive character or moves, his normals being so, you know, pretty straightforward is that you'll know what to do or know what your options are. Like if you wanted to go for something special, you know, you could try going for down airs out of it or whatever. Like, like you, these are the options that I'm, I'm giving you some examples, but really it's, it's there's a lot you can explore with and it, and it won't be too difficult for you to, to you know to branch out in other combos but nair wanting um is really good for for combos obviously it's not true um later percents and if they di out properly but uh definitely reliable um the next thing i want to talk about is down special um 
the most common thing you'll go for out of a down special is a forward air like that. Um, it's very punishing and down B does a lot of damage. So be ready to be ready for your down B to connect if you throw it out and try and get the most out of it. Uh, next is, like I said, jab, jab, down tilt chains. Um, let's put them at lower percent. So just like that. I mean, like, none of that's true necessarily, especially because I don't have him letting, I'm not letting him tech right now. But he's also not DIing in. That was just like normal DI. So, you'll, once you, you know, play with more players, you'll see that you're able to get a lot off of jabs and down tilt in particular. And just going, and just reacting based on, on what they do. And uh, adapting to their, to their defensive options. So yeah, the jab, jab, and the down tilt chains, and then in the dash tech if they, if they do tech or they get out of your, your uh, jab or down tilt range. Of course, there's up tilt up air. Oh, well, there's up tilt forward air too, but I wanted to talk about up tilt up air like that. And then out of up air, you can almost always get forward air or another up air if uh, the DI isn't optimal. So uh, that, that so that just is, a I guess, a three hit chain of up tilt up air forward air. Um, and then just honestly, I want to, it's kind of silly, but I do want to mention like you should feel really comfortable with fair, fair chains. So hitting someone with forward air and seeing that they DI in and then basically taking their stock for it. Probably not merchant port where um, there's a lot more space off stage. But on the stages like rock wall where there's not much space between the end of the, the stage and the blast zone. Um, get really comfortable with forward air chains. It can get you some really early stocks, and yeah, you should really be able to take advantage of it. So yeah, um, last thing to mention is that some you can go for a down air. You can start combos off with a grounded down air, like that, and then maybe try and react. I think the most reliable thing is to go for an aerial out of the down air, um, especially a forward air, since it reaches the furthest. And those are all the basic combos I want to talk about. Uh, next are some recovery mix-ups. Um, so number one I want to say is, if possible, do not pillar away from the wall. Um, do not pillar in this position. Do everything you can to not pillar like right here. This is, in general, oops, my bad. Uh, in general, this is not a great pillar position. You can easily be gimped. Prag's recovery often excels at on the wall right here. You up B here because anytime you get hit in this position, you pillar and someone hits you if they want to be aggressive, you can always tech. And after you tech, you usually want to throw out a fast aerial like Nair. So I'm, I'm not going to try and set the CPU up to hit me. It would probably take too long, but get good at teching and tech Nairing off of um, off of the wall. Whenever you're recovering, it's going to be huge for you as a crack player. Um, the, the other... Uh, case where you want to yeah the, the the biggest time you want to not pillar against the wall is if you're confident that the opponent isn't going to already be off stage waiting for you to do a bad pillar just to just to get a, an early kill in that case if you get hit off stage and you can double jump and up b and this is a pretty solid pillar way up here because in general recovering high in rivals is really good and so if you are confident that you're not going to get chased immediately then putting a pillar up way over here is not a bad idea at all. Um, definitely something you can use. But overall, the, my suggestion for getting to the wall, or my first suggestion is go to the wall most of the time. And to do that, you can use side B. Once you get to the wall, you can you know press B again, stop your side B, and then up B. Um, they can, your opponent can definitely threaten you. And like I said, they can do slight knockback against your side B. So for one, it's about knowing how well they can threaten you. And then two, whether or not you can even get to the wall. So for example, if I got out of hit stun right here, I wouldn't side B right away because I'm not going to make it to the wall. Instead, I would like air dodge and double jump and then I would side B to get to the wall. Oh, I, I didn't press the right button. <laughs> um, and then once you side B to the wall, then you up B. And then you try and use some more mix-ups or then you, you know, you try and proceed to, to get onto the stage from there. Um, so, what are some things you can do after you do this pillar that I'm talking about right here? 
Well, first off, if you're at this height, you can go for up tilts. You can go for up airs to try and like, if they're just standing too close and they're not respecting your options, you can you can definitely go for these uh, up airs to, to push them away. Um, what else you can do is throw a rock. That's very common. You might want to know, or you, you want to know how to hit your rock shards at an angle that will hit your opponent from here. Um, so one of those is just throwing your rock down and then you can down strong. You can see that those send toward the stage. You can do a nair. You can do this other nair. As you see, like this nair sent straight up almost. And then this nair sent at an upwards and to the left angle. And the only difference is that I'm fast falling. Uh, one of the nairs and the other nair I'm just buffering right out of the throw. So... Um, those are definitely options at your disposal. Of course, another option you have is to grab your rock and you can throw it up. And then you can hit your rock when you come back on the stage. Or you can just throw it up. Oh, right. I've already pulled a rock on that pillar, so I can't do it again. Um, you can just throw it up and then just wave land on. Of course, wave landing on quickly is always a mix-up you can employ. And it's really good, especially because you have a frame for down tilt. So doing what I just did there is, is really solid and can get you back onto the stage a lot of times, especially if you're good at teching. Like I said, you really should uh, practice if you want to play Craig. Um, teching on, on your pillar and as you recover is very, very key. Um, and yeah, those are the main things I want to say about recovering uh, with Craig. Um, maybe the last thing I'll mention is that in general, Try and delay using your pillar as much as you can. In the oper in the case that you have an opportunity to reverse your edge guard, sometimes people want to just gimp crag, but if you're out here stalling, throwing out back airs and like whatever the like before you side B to the wall and then up B. I did it again. Uh, and then you up B. Um, then, then you have more chances of being like alone and like having not having to be feel pressured off stage. Uh, so yeah, take as much time as you need, but try to avoid this pillar or just pillaring out here in general, especially below stage height and just not against the wall is just not ideal. So that's the main thing I have to say about recovery. Um, next are kill confirms. So what are some kill confirms? Uh, well, at a good enough percent, especially a high enough percent, especially, um, what is it? Uh, on a platform, yeah. Let me put him on a platform. I'll just put normal DI. Um, so on bad DI, up tilt, up air definitely kills. And you know, the higher you up, or the higher up on like a platform you are, the sooner it'll kill, obviously. But overall, you can definitely you can definitely use up tilt, up air to kill. Um, you can also pop them up with nair. So nair one into up air. Oh, but this one only works. Nair one into up air works on DI in, like that. Um. You can use Nair 2 or 3 the same way. I would say this most commonly happens, again, whenever you're using Nair and maybe you're trying to combo break and then the second hit clips them and now they're like just floating in the air above you. So get comfortable, uh, get comfortable using up air out of your Nairs for sure. Uh, back air into up strong. Another DIN, kill confirm, very solid. Uh, same way, back air into up air can do the same thing. Um, oh, so yeah, up strong can kill earlier than than up air. So the same thing with nair, you can come, you can convert into a, an up strong. So you can do nair one and up strong. This one's very common, and this is at high percent. Like I, he's at 120 here. He could be probably not 80s, but maybe like 97. This will kill if I dash like I'm supposed to. That time I, I got the weak hit of of, of uh, upstream. So yeah, definitely kill and it's definitely really good. And all it relies on is them DIing in one hit of Nair 1, which is really fast and uh, can can easily be mis DI'd. <clears throat> I've told you and I've shown you the, the back air and the down B off stage. Um, I've shown you that a couple times already. If you get a DI read, you can definitely kill um, from falling up air into up air. So I'm gonna have them. He's gonna. Be, they're gonna be at 94, and I know. And they're gonna di in. I'm gonna say I have the read that they're gonna di in. 
you can connect up bears really easy easily and get kills this way um you know same way if they di'd out oops if you get a read and you commit to it you can get you can steal a stock really early with double up air honestly um and then the last one i want to talk about is down special grounded down special into up strong um so if you hit with the first hit of this spike so they're like right in front of you no matter their di you can connect into an up strong and it'll kill so i'll have them di completely out just like that and it's a kill confirm um so that's a really, really powerful one uh, that you should, you know, feel comfortable doing as well. And so lastly, I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks for Craig. Once again, I'm not a Craig main and I definitely don't know all of them. Uh, it's just that since he's so fundamentally reliant on these mix-ups and these tricks that you have as a Craig player to do well in neutral, um, I feel like even though this is a mostly beginner's guide, it, it's important to at least mention some of them so that you can uh you know get some motivation or get the ball rolling on some ideas so a couple of things like this first one i'm going to mention is definitely it is, is an advanced like probably a more advanced crag technique but just something i'm going to throw out there you can decide to learn it if you want to so it's called break canceling um long story short if you do an aerial close enough to your rock um you can cancel the lag of uh, of like falling to the ground of your aerial. Or like you can cancel the lag of your, the rest of your aerial. Um, so for example, I'm gonna do instant down, I'm gonna down throw my rock and I'm gonna do nair right away. And I'm spamming jump, but you see I just, I can't, like nothing's happening. It's cause I'm, I'm using my nair, right? My nair, I have, I have to continue my move. Well, if you do it close enough, or in this case, I'm gonna throw the rock down and I'm gonna fast fall and input the nair. Um, at the same time, you can act out of it immediately, which means you can jump out of it. Just like that. And so this this is like a pretty cool tool to like send the shards at this angle, like that at that angle, but um, to act right away out of it. And so you can kind of combo the rock shards into an aerial. Um, I suggest like watching MSB. He's the person I know that does it the most. Um, but it's a really it's a really interesting technique that you can use to. You know act out of rock sh hitting your rock um faster than you know way faster than normal because you, you have no lag here um you know and there's moves like down strong that you can use that do it for you automatically and it's very easy so you just down strong and you can jump right away and so it's a uh, that's something i use up against the wall sometimes as i recover that's just another idea um so one key tip Let's say Zetterburn, oh gosh, he's not that far away. Let's say Zetterburn's over there and I'm here and I don't want to pull a rock right here. If you pull a rock right here, you're very susceptible to like just him running up and up airing you. As a way of pulling your rock um, reliably in this situation, you can run off of the platform and input the, the, the rock pool. And then you have a rock and you're way over here and he, could, he can't punish you. Or I mean, he couldn't true punish your rock pool. Unless he hard read it or something and he got a, an early start. So to do this, um, you just oops, you just run off the platform or or the stage. You can do it from the stage too. Oh, I, I had no end leg. Or uh, uh, the, the rock was on cooldown still. Um, you just run off the platform and you press B. Uh, you want to make sure that you're, you're pressing neutral B. So you should be letting go of the stick. But yeah, this is something you'll need to practice probably. Um, for a little bit, but it's a very important tool um, at, at being able to pull your rock since I believe it's like such a vital point Well, it is such a vital part of his kit and really important in a lot of matchups is to have rock out and just to ex exert this much pressure Just from like being able to short hop around or full hop around um, And and throw it at a ambiguous time very very important for him. Just overall of having his rock out um, your side B, very laggy, and you can see, like, uh, let me move Zetterburn. So if I was to try and turn around my side B, you can see it's really slow, and he even loses the hitbox whenever he's turning. You can see that after he turns, it's, like, very sludgy, right? Well, if you, if you do it up against, uh, a ledge, so this can be a, a platform or this stage, that one was kind of slow. That was slow. 
that one was fast. You can see that he he gets a good boost from it and a limited amount of uh, downtime from the turn. Whereas if I don't hit that turn, you see I only get this far. But if I do hit the turn, I get a, I go a little bit further. And so that's a little trick that you can know about. And there's ways of doing it even better. But uh, you'll, you, you, you'll have to find this out on your own or, or look up for some advice. Maybe in the Rattles Academy Discord. Um, another trick I want to mention is how your down B works. So there are some stages where the two platforms, like the, these two platforms, are close enough such that if you're, if you're close enough off of the edge of the top one and you down B, your spikes will go to the next platform instead of to the ground. And that's a big mix-up that you can employ. Another mix-up that you have, let's say that they are, hopefully he, hopefully he goes to the, the platform. Hmm, let me put him at like 0%. Or whatever. Hmm, instead of burn, can you please just... All right, fine. He's not gonna. He's not gonna behave. I'm not gonna try and waste your time. Uh, if you up B, let's say you put your pillar in between these two platforms, like so. Your down special goes through the pillar, and it will still try to detect the the highest you know body like of of of, of stage or platform um, to to determine where the spikes are made. So, oh, that was a bad example. Sorry. Let me go right here. So in this case, the last spike actually ends up on the on the on the other platform instead of on the ground. But if the if the platforms, I mean if the pillar's not there, all of your spikes hit the ground. So another way of just mixing up your spikes, um, you you definitely want to explore with that because you know if you're someone who likes putting your your pillar out on the stage, um, then that that'll be a more common scenario, and then your spikes can also you know be just mis misplaced or ambiguous as to where they will spawn the further back on a platform you are um, as well. So all these mix-ups just to keep in mind. Um, and then last thing I want to say as a tip is know that you can throw your... Uh, let's see, what am I trying to say? You can neutral throw while moving forward and then double jump and grab your rock. Um again just like that and so this is this is useful for neutral first of all because let me see let me just end his stock in this situation or maybe a little bit further in this situation he might be ready to parry your neutral throw so you could oh man i'm messing up a lot now but you can do something like that where you re-grab your rock before it lands and then you can throw it down or maybe you just don't throw it again at all and then whenever you see the parry then you fall and throw it um, and then this is also useful for recovering. You can use a little mix up like this where you re-grab your rock and throw it down. Um, just a little trick that you can use, uh, a, especially in neutral, but also as a recovery tool. Um, like that. Um, and throwing your rock down, another trick, will give you this extra boost or at least let you stall in the air a little bit longer. And so if you're ever caught with your rock and you get hit off stage, most often than not, you want to throw your rock down because the other throws, you'll just keep falling the entire time. Um, but meanwhile, if you throw your rock, if you throw your rock down, then, then yeah, you have that extra time to like go to the wall or just immediately like panic and, and, and throw out a pillar. You do that. Um, and that is everything I have to talk about in this video. Um, it did end up being a pretty good length of, you know, including the tips and tricks. But also I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, how to employ all these different options that Krag has at his disposal. Even though he's a pretty, you know, straightforward character with very intuitive, um, you know, moves and, and, and how they work and the like, game plans. Uh, it's because of how simplistic that is that you want to learn how to mix those up. It's very fundamental. He's a very fundamental character. Um, very mix up heavy. Uh, but he's a lot of fun. I think he's really fun. Hopefully this helps you get started and you enjoy him as well. Uh, so with that, that's the end. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.